We're talking with Constant Steinkuhler, who is going to give the keynote at DML 2016. Um, professor Steinkuhler is professor in digital media at University of Wisconsin Madison and co director of Games, Learning, and Society. So give us a little preview of what you're going to talk about uh, at, at DML. Um, well, first, can I just nerd out for a minute and say it's super exciting to talk to Howard Reingold in my life? <laughs> I was a graduate student reading your work when I started studying games. Um, the topic I'm going to be talking about is really thinking about sort of what is the intellectual culture of games. Um, you know, now there's been sort of a sea change for the last decade or two, though. Games have really been seen as sort of this transgressive space that was in competition with kind of social interaction and work. And even though games now have become part of sort of our everyday lives and um, are kind of treated with less suspicion, there still is a lot of trepidation around screen time for people. And we tend to think of these two worlds as very sort of separated and isolated, as though we have our real life, our off-world life, and then our online life, our screen life. And so part of what I want to talk about at DML is just sort of think through kind of what is the intellectual life that we have online and how is there coherence across these two spaces. Or how is there a lack of coherence? So for me, I'm really interested in how it is that um, that students and young adults think about like how it is that their interests make those spaces very coherent, where we we really don't think about whether or not a tool is digital, and yet when it comes to things like whether or not they're able to leverage those skills in places where they're assessed, like school, we, they tend to be firewalled out. So, for example, around issues of reading, thinking about why is it that, you know, in much of the data that we have, both qualitative and quantitative, we can see that, that you know, that gamers are doing a lot of interesting science work, a lot of interesting reading and writing that's on a fairly sophisticated, complex level, um, you know, requiring on average high school graduation. And yet, and yet we still have, um, you know, a very much a suppressed, um, you know, boys read two grades below level. Boys' performance, boys in particular, their performance in literacy, despite the fact that they're still one of the biggest markets for gaming, is still very much suppressed in school. So part of what I want to think about is how is it that we have kind of um, kept out of schools much of sort of the interest-driven complexity and rich intellectual work that kids are doing? So um, I, I presume that... Uh games learning and society also has something to do with how are we going to uh, bring the enthusiasm that that people have for games to yeah. the kind of learning they're supposed to do um, yeah what anything new there that uh, you, you're going to talk about yeah um well hopefully right i mean i think that um you know, more and more what we're finding is that we have sort of two threads. There's two kind of big um, pulls and games for learning right now. One is really around thinking about games for learning or educational games as sort of part of this broader topic of interest-driven learning. But then there's this other real strong theme around um, games and assessment. And so um, from that perspective, you end up with this, um, this split between, you know, regimes that are really about sort Sort of building evidence-based arguments about what people can do, but those assessment systems also do a lot of norming and sorting of people. So, you know, on the one hand, you've got sort of interest-driven learning and self-actualized kind of intellectual work being part of what you do to engage in the world um, based on your own drives and your own interests and what's relevant for your context, right? But on the other end, you end up with um, a lot of systems where um, we're doing the exact opposite, where what we're doing is not games as a way to um, to forward someone, sort of games as a vehicle for someone to forward their own goals, but rather games as a vehicle to norm out, um, you know, their, to use their play activity to get them on a normed cycle. So I don't know those tensions get resolved, but I do think that um, engaging in a conversation where we start to look at those two things and play with each other is uh, important. I think it says something about um, one, sort of what is the climate around education right now? I think we're at kind of a tipping point, and I don't know what the future will be, and I'm not foolhardy enough to think I can predict it. But I think we have these two different tensions, not just in games-based learning, but kind of around a lot of the work um, uh, 
uh, in out of school learning and in school learning around digital media and you know more traditional means that we're coming to this place where you know we're going to have to either find a way to synthesize these two things or throw one out the window. Um, and I know which one I want to throw out the window. Um, <laughs> but I don't know if everyone agrees with me. I know which one I would want to throw out the window. Um, you know, but I don't represent everybody. I think that, you know, what I'm really interested in is trying to get us into this public conversation, um, where we think through as a, as a community, what we think we ought to be doing, right? Well, your, your excitement about the topic is obvious and, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that your keynote is going to do a lot to stimulate that conversation. So Thanks very much, and I look forward to your, your full full talk. In, Absolutely. In it's so great to talk to you. Take care, and thank you. Take care.